Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at this Asus EEE PC 4G Surf slash XP netbook. Now the interesting thing about this netbook is the fact that it run on a system called Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs. That is a variation of Windows XP. Its primary aim was to sort of get businesses away from the 9x series of Windows whilst they don't actually have to upgrade their hardware and this meant that they would save a lot of money and Microsoft um, well they would have had better sort of statistics for Windows XP in that era so I mean it's quite interesting, I'll give you a little tour on this side we've got an Ethernet port there um, USB 2.0 port, a little fan obviously a microphone input, headphone output jack there and we've got this little fake SD card which is supposed to represent where they go um, two more USB 2.0 ports, VGA port and some sort of little lockdown device there as well so the really interesting thing about this system is I think they're also designed to run on Linux as well as Windows now the reason why I think this is because if I open this up, we can see, obviously it's all in good condition, but down here, if I zoom in on it, that is not a Windows key. That is some sort of home key. It's this one. Um, which, obviously, like I say, suggests to me that this is some sort of computer that was designed to run on both Windows and Linux. Um, I don't know if Surf was some sort of Linux distribution, because Surf slash XP, I suppose, yeah, it could be. Now, um, not sure if I mentioned also, but this comes, well, the actual computer runs on 512 megs of RAM. It's got a Celeron M processor clocked in at 900 megahertz, and it's got a display with eight, what was it? 800 by 640 resolution I think um, and I've already started this up and had to look around it's got a sort of dodgy installation of um, Windows FLP on it at the moment um, so I'm going to reinstall Windows and reinstall the drivers really so let's begin the restoration Right, so one thing I did neglect to mention before is the fact that this has got its charge input around the back. Um, but apart from that, that's basically it. And, well, I've got the external optical drive plugged in. Let's just boot this up. And the boot menu key is exit, so I'll be rapidly pressing that. Right, so here we go, we've got the USB one right there. God, that's quick. Usually takes a while, but you know what? That external optical drive is the one piece of hardware which hasn't broke over the years. I don't know how. It's kind of weird. They usually frequently break him. So here is the start of the installation process. It's rather interesting, really. I believe there was another one like this. Um, is it Windows 7 or Windows Vista? It said loading Windows pre-installation environment. I think that's what it said anyway. Hmm. Now, I find this system fascinating for so many reasons. I mean, first and foremost, the fact that it was released, I think it was two months before the release of Windows Vista. And they hadn't actually like really changed it into a more Vista-esque like system I mean it's still got the blooming Windows XP boot screen as you can see and I do hope this isn't actually booting into the OS otherwise that will be worrying
Well, I'm sure you can hear the optical drive is going mad. Oh, here we go. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was booting into that dodgy version of FLP then. FLP stands in for Fundamentals for Legacy PCs. I mean, it is quite a Vista-esque logo, I must say, but it's got that sort of Windows XP graphic where it's quite grainy. Press any key for command prompt. Get the mouse out of the way. Will it get better if I zoom in? Ah, there we are. That's better. Right, well, this might take some time, so... Oh, no, maybe I won't speed it up. And it looks like his resolution has gone weird as well, because that is actually the screen, the next... Well, that's the bottom of the screen, just there. Right, next. Accept the license agreement. Interactive mode. It's got an unattended mode on this as well. Right, here is the product key thing. I'll quickly type the product key in and resume the video. Right, so now for the language part. Full configuration. This is what I like about Windows FLP. The fact that it's got minimal configuration for literally just the bare bare, the what well, sorry the bare bones of windows and then you've got a typical one which is sort of like what well, it was um like with windows 9x in 9895 it always came up with like the minimal typical portable i remember as well and that's what it's got here and i really like that and then it can tell you the space required down there or our custom configuration but I'm going to go with the full configuration. This is such a fascinating little operating system. It's got so many niches. Right. Here is disk zero, partition one. And I'll delete that partition. And then I'll create one. Maximum disk space. Yes. And one thing, oh, hang on. Perform a quick format or enable fire. Order and file compression. Now the interesting thing is, although this is heavily based off XP, it has got this stuff from Vista where it can actually format from within the out-of-box experience rather than looking like an SDOS when you're actually installing it. This is this looks a lot more advanced than obviously its um, XP predecessor. So I won't bother with a quick format. Right. No, I can't fill that in. Just put FLP. Won't bother with that. Oh no, you have to put an administrator password in. There we are. I thought of one. Um, oh. You get it assigned automatically. Oh god. Let's go next. No. 
There are lots of businessy things on this. This is because it was designed for use in businesses. Um, and oh, I like this. It shows you all your installation options. I believe that was done in quite a few Linux distros actually, which is quite good. Um, let's put, I'll just install that now. Right, well, after eons of restarts, it looks like we've finally got to the logon screen. Um, right, so it's control, alt, delete, and username. Well, wouldn't that just be... One thing I also noticed about this is, I think it was in Windows XP, you could only type a certain amount of characters as your username. You can go, well, I remember in a previous video it just was Retro Technology Shop and I couldn't get the whole rest of the name. So, well, at least with this it can actually do all that. Um, and I suppose that's quite handy for longer usernames, for user IDs and things like that. But uh, I'm going to, once again, pause the video and type in that password, if I can remember it. Right, so after, well, messing about with this yesterday, I finally found out what was wrong. Um, the actual username wasn't obviously Retro Technology Showcase, as I thought it would be. It's actually just an illustrator. And, well quite a bit of time to find that out but um, after I logged in I also removed the password which you can actually do even though it set up its requirement right so here we are at the desktop and as you may have noticed I've got a USB stick there that is because um, well, it's got all the drivers on it basically so if we go to computer I'll begin installing the drivers and then I can speed up the video. Well, that's that. I mean, it, it appears to be done now. It looks a lot better than it did, and it's got some nice graphics drivers. Um, everything appears to be loading quickly, and it's got lots of utilities down here as well. Um, and I believe that's basically our well, restoration complete for this one. As I said before, it did have a driver for the graphics um, for this machine, but it looked all grainy like it did before we installed the drivers. I mean, if I zoom this in a bit, maybe you'll see it a bit clearer. But, for example, when I open something like computer, it just just looks better. Or if I go to the log off, or if I log off, then you can see it's just focused in the middle, rather than actually being all sort of grainy. It just looks better, really. But... That basically brings it to the end of this video, um, so thank you all very much for watching. I'm going to investigate all this Intel stuff that he keeps trying to make me do. Mm, yeah. And it's connected to a printer. Right, so I'm going to... Um, 
in the video here, tell it not to connect to random neighbours printers and that's about it. So thank you all very much for watching and I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did you can support my channel not by giving it any money but by simply subscribing to it as it gives me more motivation to make future videos. So until next time, thank you all once again very much for watching and goodbye.